Research analysts point out the huge contribution made by the telecommunication giant Huawei in Africa for the past two decades. It now has a footprint in more than 40 countries. It's an important contributor to growth and development and has created more than a thousand jobs in South Africa and a few thousand more in other Southern African countries. Huawei has also invested 72 million South African Rand in an innovation center on the African continent. In addition, the company is also involved in training at 160 universities worldwide. We are heading towards a tech cold war in which governments will have to choose between doing business with Chinese or US tech companies. Although much of the trade war between the US and China centers on tariffs, one of the major sticking points continues to be the U.S. treatment of Chinese companies, and more specifically, Huawei. Fazlan Fransman, a senior researcher at Moja Research Institute, says it's important to understand the issue by looking at the political landscape and influences. I think it's important to understand what's happening with Huawei and the bigger brand, uh, its brand globally, uh, within the context of a geopolitical narrative that, that is happening. Um, we've seen, for example, the first step of Huawei's ostr ostracization, uh, by, specifically by the West, and, and if we have to pinpoint that, it's specifically by the US, um, through, for example, condemnation, and this is really how it started, condemnation through uh, saying that Huawei has traded with Iran and because Iran has, has uh, the U.S. has sanctions against Iran. According to some media reports, the U.S. Congress tried to exert pressure on mobile operators not to do business with the Chinese telecommunications giant Huawei and for Huawei smartphones not to be available from any major U.S. mobile operator. They say that Huawei uh, poses a security threat to, um, to any user and, and for, for example in their context they say this um, uh, to the American user. But we have to understand that this narrative that they pose a threat actually emerges from way back as 2012. Why has it taken that long before, uh, you know, before this actual action having been taken? A spokesperson for the South African Right to Know campaign says it is concerned about the allegations and counter-allegations. So we're particularly concerned about um, these economic powerhouses using technology to surveil and to spy on ordinary citizens, but not being willing to share the actual evidence. Michael Lowy, the French Brazilian Marxist philosopher, describes it all as US imperialism. It's a ca capitalist conflict about uh, business interests, struggle for markets, and so on. But on the other side, uh, it's uh, U.S. imperialist arrogance, Donald Trump's uh, crazy projects of uh, world hegemony. But a far bigger agenda might be at play that centers around the domination of information technology. The real issue actually is the fact that Huawei's technology is two or three years ahead of its competitors and I think this is really where it poses a challenge for, for the developing world because the developing world, specifically Africa, is looking towards technology that will leapfrog it to, 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 to be able to catch up with you know, the rest of the world and Huawei presents that opportunity for them. In Africa, Huawei has already altered the way people connect and are entertained even in rural areas. Huawei has made significant investment into Africa, significant investment into ICT, and with its 5D, 5G technology at a cheaper cost, would be able to leapfrog African governments in terms of the, the technology they provide. Do we walk away from that? And that's the critical question I think each and every African government will need to pose to itself. Franz Mann also says if the tech cold war comes down to a choice between Chinese or American technology, it seems if Africa's choice has already been made.